Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, the Medical Director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation. Welcome to our program. Today we are going to discuss an article that was published in the Journal of Urology. The name of the article is Pathological Outcomes in Men with Low Risk and a new term, Very Low Risk Prostate Cancer, Implication on the Practice of Active Surveillance. This article was written by researchers from the Department of Urology at John Hopkins. We see some familiar names, Dr. Epstein, Ellen Parting, Patrick Walsh, and Dr. Valentine Carter. In this article, they introduced an old but renewed interest in the term of PSA density, which basically what it is, you take the PSA level and you divide it by the density, and it has implication on prognosis which I'll discuss when I discuss the abstract itself. So let's go now and look at the abstract itself. In this study, they assessed the pathological outcomes of the radical prostatectomy in patients that they defined low risk and very low risk groups prior to the radical prostatectomy itself. Materials and method. In this study, they prospectively collected 7,486 patients that were subject for active surveillance who underwent radical retropubic prostatectomy. Candidates were designed into two groups. The first group were stage T1C or T2A with PSA of 10 nanogram or less and Gleason score of 6 or less or a very low risk group that they defined as somebody with stage T1C only, PSA density 0.15 or less, and a Gleason score of 6 or less, two or fewer positive biopsy cores, and 50% of less cancer involved in per core. And this was based on preoperative data. So what is this PSA density? We used to take this calculation of PSA density, which is the PSA divided by the volume of the gland. We used to do it in the days prior to biopsy to try to see if the PSA density was below 0.11 or below 0.12. We would say that probably a biopsy is not necessary. And if it would be above 0.11 or 0.12 above it, we would say that biopsy is probably needed. And this was specifically designed for a patient that had PSA between 4 and 10. And we know that the PSA may not be, the elevation of PSA may not be the result of cancer. But Dr. Catalona came with this definition of PSA density and the decision when to do a biopsy or not. So even years ago, we looked at PSA density as a good prognostic test. In this study, they took the PSA density and added it to a designation of very low risk. We have low risk, the Gleason 6, and then we have the very low risk, which one of the main elements here is the PSA density. And I think viewers should take into account when they try to evaluate their cancer that there is still a place to do a simple test of PSA density but you will need to have accurate measurement of the volume by ultrasound or preferably by MRI, and then try to see what is the density. And accordingly, you could add another element here to the risk assessment. The adverse events related to this study are twofold. One of them, what percentage of patients taken from these two groups, what percentage had cancer which escaped the capsule? And what percentage they had higher glycine, 7 or above? That means what percentage had higher grade and what percentage were found to have higher stage? So let's now go and look at the results. Results. A total of 7,333 subjects met the criteria for low risk cancer disease, and 153 had very low risk disease. The proportion of subjects at low risk found to have Gleason score upgrade or non-organ confined cancer on final pathology was 21.8% to 
or 23.1% respectively. This was in the group with the low risk. 21% there was upgrade of the cancer and 23% was upgrade of the stage of the disease to be found outside of the prostate. Let's look now at the very low risk patient. What were the numbers? Here we see it. corresponding values in those at very low risk were 13.1% and 8.5% respectively. That means that those that were very low risk had much less risk of upgrading or upstaging. You see the difference in the percentage. 21% upgrade of the glisten, 31% upgrade of the glisten in the very low risk. When we talked about non-organ confined disease, 23.1 had non-organ confined disease in the low risk, yet 8.5% were found to have non-organ confined disease in the very low risk group. Let's go now and look at the conclusions. Conclusion. Men with very low risk prostate cancer were at significantly lower risk for adverse finding at surgery compared to those with low risk. This data supports the stratification of low risk cancer when selecting or counseling men that are appropriate for active surveillance. And again we see the, the PSA density may add another element here to try to convince patients of acti on active surveillance not to rush into radical prostatectomy because the fear of the higher grade or having a non-organ confined disease is much lower in the very low risk. I would say that I will not take this as uh, standalone factor and this has to be combined with the behavior and the dynamic changes in the PSA, in the physical examination, in imaging tests, and ultimately, for the time being, we have to rely on biopsies, but I would say we would be less aggressive with our indication to do biopsies in the patient with a very low risk prostate cancer. And remember, some people believe that even a patient with glycine 6, he may be by itself not a high risk for the disease progression, and maybe we have to change even the definition of cancer. Some of them go that far. But I would say the importance of this article is introducing you to the new definition of PSA density, which should be one of the elements to consider risk. It is the PSA velocity, the doubling time, the change in physical examination, which we should not forget that there is a place for doing a DRE in follow-up of, of patients with active surveillance and also looking at imaging, which are improving by the day. If you have any question, please call us at 619-906-4700 or write to us at info at pcref.org. Take care, stay well, and stay informed. Goodbye.